Hi, it's your coach Joe Lucas and welcome to my latest Practice Power blog. Hey, uh, welcome to really the end of the first quarter of 2015 also. Here we are, uh, just a few days left for that uh, you know fun April Fool's Day. Hey, just got back from Dallas a couple days ago, had a great uh, one day mastermind for a number of my clients and had a uh, tremendous uh, two day uh, training for a national broker dealer. So all's good and uh, let's finish up uh, this with part number four. So the, the DNA of top producers is really to me a 13 point kind of checklist on what successful producers do that maybe uh, some of you are just not doing or haven't thought about it or just don't do it at the level uh, that you need to. So what I want to do is conclude this uh, four-parter today uh, with our last a couple of markers. And uh, let's get started. So the first thing is marker number 10, which uh, can, you, the, can you, the advisor, the business owner, the professional, can you articulate your core story and your statement of preeminence. So uh, if you've done our business planning process, uh, you know inside of the uh, last module, uh, module number eight, our business development slash marketing module, I spent a lot of time talking about why these two elements are very important. They are, they are different but similar, which is not a conflict here. So what a, what a, what a statement of preeminence is, is it answers a very important question. And it's interesting because when you ask another advisor this question directly, often you'll get a lot of body language that's not good, right? So what's the statement of preeminence? The statement of preeminence answers this question. Why should I do business with you? Why should I choose you versus the guy or gal across the street, versus the bank around the corner, versus the uh, guy or gal on the internet, uh, versus the robo-advisor, versus all this? Why do business with you? And what a lot of advisors will say when asked that question is they'll give you some generic generalizations like, uh, well, we're client service oriented, we're proactive, we're this. And, you know, what, what those are, all, all those are nice ideas, but what does it really mean? A statement of preeminence is where you can sit there and say with, with absolute congruency, absolute power, absolute certainty, right, that here's why people hire us. And it's about bullet points. You know, the reason why uh, clients choose to engage us is because, A, we're financial planning centric. B, we're proactive in the sense of that we reach out to our top clients once a month and we do a semi-annual review. Third, we want to be our, your 911 and your 411 when it comes to your investments and finances. We want to be the person, the place you come for information about any major life decision. And we want to be, when, when the market hits the fan, we want to be the first call. You know, we want to we want to talk to you and communicate. And I can give you several other bullet points. But you see the difference. The difference between just saying, "Well, we're client service oriented," or "We're holistic planning," and all that—it's all garbage. Specifics sell. Specifics influence, not generalization. Okay. So that's what statement preeminence sounds like. And just as an example, all of you need to develop your own. So when somebody's talking to you or, or you know, you, 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 they're asking you about what, what makes you different than anybody else, you can sit there and say, here's why. Now, here's a core story. What a core story is, here's the premise. What a core story is, and I want you to picture this for a second. I want you to picture me, your coach, or your, uh, I guess, blog person, right? If I were able to get you in front of a hundred of your ideal prospects. So if you dealt with doctors, I get you a hundred doctors. If you dealt with business owners, I get you a hundred business owners, right? If you dealt with, uh, you know, government employees, I get you a hundred government employees, whatever it is, ideal. And I'm going to give you five minutes, five full minutes. No, uh, no deck presentation here, right? So no PowerPoints. And I want you to get in front of the stage. And I want you to tell a couple of client stories about how you made a huge difference in their life. Remember, stories sell. Stories influence. Facts and figures don't. So could you, up there, could you get up there and tell one or two client stories in the space of three to five minutes about why you're unique, why you're different? And you can draw upon your statement of preeminence and just embellish, embellish upon it. So why do I need a core story? Very simple. When you're out there networking, when you're out there in your warm market and people ask you how things are going, 
you, know, you always want to say, hey, things are really good. In fact, you know, we just had a client in the other day, a great clean, you know, 20-some-odd year client relationship, and blah, 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 and you give them the story, of course, but, you know, with the levels of anonymity, of course. But you, you demonstrate by evidence of how you do things. That's what great advisors do. They can sit there and have their statement of preeminence and, and their core story wired. And, and by the way, I know a lot of times we look at this and we say, wow, you know, this is really, this is really a great marketing thing. It sounds almost like a mission statement, right? Which I don't like mission statements because I, I tend to think they're just contrived and copied. A statement of preeminence and core story is something that you review every day as part of your morning ritual. In other words, eat your own cooking, drink your own Kool-Aid, right? If it's, if it's good enough to put out in the marketplace, it better be good enough for yourself. So these are just some elements that we want to have. You want to have a well-developed, again, core story and a statement of preeminence. Let's go on to marker number 11. And, uh, you know, we could probably spend several other uh, blog posts on this, but we're going to kind of be brief here today. So the technology piece. Um, for a lot of advisors who are just not technology gifted, and look, I'm going to say this right away. I'm not going to put an age on this because I don't believe in that. I think I've got some clients who are in their late 50s, 60s, even early 70s who, probably, who could probably run rings around most 20-something-year-olds when it comes to technology, when it comes to this industry. So I'm not going to put an age factor on it. But let me say this. Technology is a tool of liberation. Technology untethers you from the office. Technology also untethers your clients from you from a geographic situation. Here's one of the biggest challenges that we're going to have as an industry, along with the fact that everybody's getting older and we're aging out and we, we, we have you know this, uh, this gap, if you will, uh, in terms of the next generation. Here's the other piece. For, for a lot of you, a certain percentage of your client base is going to not just retire, but they're going to either A, move away to either lower cost, lower tax localities, or at minimum, they're probably going to travel a lot. Uh, I just spoke to a client uh, last week, and uh, he was letting me know that one of his clients is actually down in, uh, I think it's Argentina, no, it's, um, it's Ecuador. They're down in Ecuador for a year, uh, just you know, on retirement doing some, uh, some nonprofit work. And so you know, guess, how, guess how we got to do reviews, right? We're not going to fly to Ecuador to go do this. We better have, we better have go to meeting. We better have WebEx, right? We better have some things like that uh, in position to go ahead and do that. Getting back to what I said about technology, it also geographically unleashes you because here's a challenge you have. If your business model is that you always physically see your clients to do reviews, a couple things happen. Number one is you get it in their mind that if they were ever to leave the state or your city or move away, that they'd have to probably go find another advisor because you never demonstrated anything other than uh, you know, what we'll call the boots on the ground model. Secondly, if they have a friend and family or a good friend of theirs or someone they really can want to refer you to, but they're a thousand miles away, they won't think about referring you because, well, so-and-so is not going to come to your office and it wouldn't be fair to have you go, you know, jump on a plane to go do that a couple times a year. So they won't even think about you from a referral and introduction standpoint. Technology allows you to have a national practice. I'm not going to get into the uh, legalities of licensing and registrations all over, in all 50 states. I'm just saying to you, if you want to have a national practice, which you all do, by the way, you need to start understanding technology is not this necessary evil that whether you're independent or your firm, or your firm shoves down your throat, it's a great tool of liberation. Conversely, uh, I have more and more clients, and boy, if, you, if you're north of the Mason-Dixon line or actually maybe just north of uh, Florida these days, uh, you've had a very brutal winter. And several of my clients, you know, took extended, uh, you know, times away from their office, south, west, southeast, um, and work remotely for, you know, three, four, five, six weeks. Uh, my uh, great clients up in Alaska, they do literally eight to ten weeks uh, in Maui uh, in the first quarter, uh, working entirely remotely. Point being is this, you know, technology is your friend, not your enemy. Don't confuse what you do to what robo-advisor is. It's a whole different platform, whole different, whole different really business, quite frankly. And uh, maybe on an upcoming blog post, I'll, uh, I'll address that a little bit more in depth and detail. Here's a test. Could you, could you work from your house for a couple days? Could you work from the nearest Starbucks for a couple days? And 
here's the thing that I want to show you because I've been, I've been really talking to a lot of my clients about this. Um, home offices are great. And I hear it often that, well, you know, I got to do this analysis for this, uh, for this review and, and I'm just going to the office because I got, uh, you know, it's easier. I got multiple screens there and it's just easier for me to have this thing set up. And, and I'm sitting there going, okay, but let's talk about this for a second. What you really want to have happen is you want to mimic your technology as closely as you can uh, from your office to your home office. From your, from your office to your home office, if you have a second home somewhere, I know a lot of you have beach houses or condos or cabins by lakes and stuff like that. And look, uh, I don't know if you guys have gone either on Amazon or Best Buy or, or you know any of the electronic stores. Hey, uh, you know, very sharp, high-definition monitors these days are cheap. No excuses anymore. If you need more real estate to visually see, to see things, please go ahead and do so. Last thing I want you to do is always in your personal development game plan, and in your and you always you know you always want to be looking at your own personal technology. How well do I do things? And then secondly, you always want to look at it from a business standpoint. You know where do we? What's our next step? How do we get more paperless? Uh, you know you know more advanced. Those are some things you want to be looking always looking at doing. In addition to uh, bringing the, what I like to call that high tech, high touch approach uh, to your local clients and then also hopefully to your extended clients around the United States, if not around the world, okay? So just a couple things that you wanna take a look at. Always be, you know, there, there's a couple, there's three things that I will always tell you will give you great payoffs in this industry, okay? And no particular order here. Um, number one is, you know, personal development, right? Invest in yourself, uh, get a coach, do those things, because at the end of the day, you know, you, get, you, you become better, your business grows. Uh, number two, you always want to be investing, uh, you know, in back into your business from a client perspective, client events, things like that. I can always give you a great return on S, return on investment on those things, right? Referral gifts, things like that. The third piece is always going to be technology or platform. Uh, no such thing as too much technology uh, these days. And I know for some of you that's not what you want to hear, uh, but it's true. And I don't look at where we are today in 2015. I look at 2020, 2025, and I know a lot of you plan to be in this. I don't care if you're in your mid-60s with no plans to retire. You've got to start thinking about what this world looks like five, ten years from now and not being on the bleeding edge, but you got to know what's going to happen and get more comfortable with technology. It is going to get more. The changes are going to happen more rapidly, not less rapidly. Okay? Let's go to marker number 12. The people around you, the team. Now, I know some of you first thing you say, well, Joe, you know, I work at a big wirehouse and I share my assistant with a thousand other advisors, right? Because that's just the way it is these days. Hey, look, you have one fourth or one third or one half or one fifth uh, bandwidth of, of, an, of another professional. You maximize that. So you take a look at it. You, uh, you, you, you sit down with that person. You do you run your team meetings. You do all those things. You also have other members of your team. Uh, your wholesalers, uh, your business partner, uh, your coach, um, whoever else is, you know, your spouse at some levels, right, if you have one. All those people are part of, you know, junior advisors, so on and so forth. All those people are on your team. So I want you to think about it in terms of concentric circles. So I have my inner team, right, which is me, uh, maybe my junior, maybe my assistant, and, you know, they're physically you know, for lack of a better term, 24-7 with me, right, my, my inter, inter team. Then I got the next concentric circle. Well, who's that going to be? Well, in my perfect world, it's going to be your coach. It's going to be any other advisors that you that you have, maybe from a technical standpoint, uh, legal standpoint. Uh, you know, all of you need to have your own accounting get done. Uh, you never allow your firm to represent you legally, so you always want to have a good, good attorney ready to go just in case. This is the way it is these days, and you want to have that uh, second concentric circle, and then you can have that third uh, concentric circle, which is which is going to be you know your wholesale partners, uh, subject matter experts, things like that. But look, the people in your in your inner circle, okay, so the inner ring, if you will, they only fall into two categories in my experiences. They either are engines of growth or anchors of failure. Period. So you've got to assess, and here's the qu and I'll give you the assessments. Are very, it's not even like a tool. It's just a real question. Knowing what you know today about the people on your inner circle, would you hire them again today? It's a very simple question. Whenever I have a client who's given me some grief 
about their inner circle, the first question I ask them is, would you hire them again? Because the answer is no, I wouldn't, then that's one path, right? If they say, yeah, I would, you know, they're, they're basically pretty good, they're just this, they're, they're going through a tough time, or we're just growing too fast, whatever. So I'll take a look at, I'll take a little different tact on that. But that's a very important question. Knowing what you know today, would you hire them again? And then also let me say this. Um, there's a thing in this industry which we don't talk about, but it, it, is, it is the real elephant in the room for a lot of you, which is how are you as a leader? How are you as a manager? How are you as a coach? You know, do you lead by example? Do you, do you, ha do you really go ahead and understand the situation? Do you communicate? Do you uh, set the tone? Do you articulate the goals and the vision uh, for the team so they can buy into it? All those things incredibly important. So just keep that in mind that your people skills, leadership skills are incredibly important. Okay. Last one, lucky 13. And you know, I always say the, you know, I want to always end on a high note here. So this really puts a lot of smile on people's faces. Um, you know, the other thing that I find, uh, and look, Seven, eight years ago, I wouldn't have the slide here at all because it was just a concept I had at the time, you know, the concept of I advisor, of really having economic abundance and time freedom, which I kind of talked a little bit about in Dallas uh, as I believe uh, the preeminent model out there in the industry, not just because I invented it, um, but because I have, you know, six, seven years now of it. And uh, here's, the, here's the deal on this. There's two ways to do this business, in my opinion. There's the, the traditional way, which is really cool. You make a lot of money, you'll get some vacation time. Uh, sometimes it's sustainable, a lot of times it's not. Uh, you can definitely burn out very quick. You feel like you have a real job, okay? Option number two, the one I like, is you totally rip up option number one, blank sheet of paper, ideal life and lifestyle. How much money do we need to earn to make that happen? How many, how, many, uh, how many clients do we need to make that happen? How many slots do we need? Uh, can I keep it to literally 144 business days a year, which is what I, you know, which if you really run what I'll call the purest form of the model, it's really Monday through Friday, three weeks a month. So we're talking, I mean, excuse me, Monday through Thursday. So we're talking 112 by 12, 144 total tactical days to drive half a million, three quarters of a million, a million, $1.5 million of GDC working part-time, uh, enjoying life. Now, when I when you see in that slide there, strategic or downtime, there is a difference, okay? So let me explain it uh, for those of you who are starting to shake your head here a little bit. So I believe there's two types of uh, themes to an advisor. Uh, there's the tactical theme, which all of you do very well, by the way. That's calling clients, doing reviews, Administrative stuff, paperwork, purely being, and Michael Gerber would say, um, uh, creator of the E-Myth, being in the business, right? So those are our tactical days. Strategic time is devoted into two elements, uh, working on you, working on the business, working on you, business planning, uh, personal development workshop, uh, things like that, right? Working on the business, working on the website, client segmentation, your, your uh, investment models, uh, strategic planning, all those things, right, are also strategic. And then the third piece is downtime, which is pure, you know, kind of get out of here, mental health, uh, you know, you know pull, the, pull the plug, if you will, for a bit, uh, rest and recover. Now, the reality is with strategic time, you know, you can do all three. You can work on yourself, work on your business, and, and have some fun. And we try, and when we do our events here, you know, when I have my clients come uh, meet me around the country or sometimes even around the world, uh, we, we break it up into sessions and fun and, you know, we find a way to do it all because I think that's the way to do it. But here's the thing. I don't have a limit on this yet. I've got clients that will take the last week of every month off. Uh, I've got a client uh, which really kind of, which, which uh, really turns the model on its ear a little bit. And uh, what he does is he takes, uh, his world is broken up into, uh, for lack of a better word, four mini business plans a year. So a quarterly plan, basically. 90, so think of, think of it as like a 90-minute chunk, right, or a three-month chunk. And what he does, which is really cool, um, is uh, what, what he will do is look at those 12 weeks and literally be tactical six weeks in a row for the quarter. So about half the quarter. Reviews, phone calls, reviews, phone calls, marketing, 
whole nine yards, right? And then, uh, and that's usually the first six months, uh, first six weeks of the quarter. And then the last six weeks of the quarter is strategic time. So we're still available for the clients. Let me be very clear. We're not disappearing on anybody, but we're available, which we tend not to want to be in the office or you work remotely. Uh, he's last year he spent, uh, and uh, he and his young family, uh, he's in his mid thirties. Uh, he and his young family spent a month in Japan, uh, dealt with, actually dealt with some client reviews uh, from halfway around the world. And uh, it's a wonderful thing. So here's my point. As I said earlier, you have two choices in this business. You could do things the traditional way, or you can get outside the box and really build something that is totally sustainable, economically abundant. Because here's what a lot of people think. You gotta be in the office to make money. And you know what? Up until about 10 years ago, I would buy that conventional thinking. But as I showed you earlier on this blog post, what does technology allow us to do? It allows us freedoms, liberation, if you will. And we've got to take advantage of that. So keep those things in mind. And a couple of things real quick before we wrap up our my post for uh, this week is uh, we are now getting ready to go into the second quarter. So a couple things. Number one, um, please make sure you put together an April monthly game plan on practicepower.net or your favorite tools, fine with me. Uh, number two, uh, love your schedule, a little window, maybe a couple hours, uh, perhaps uh, in the next week or two uh, to do a first quarter review. Just kind of benchmark where you are versus plan, pull out those business plans or go retrieve them online, right? And uh, let's take a look at them. Last thing I'd like to say is uh, in the second quarter, I've got some really cool news. Um, I've been debating this for a while and uh, I've decided to add another platform uh, to my coaching repertoire. So right now, obviously, uh, you can engage me uh, if you're by referral uh, to work personally with you, uh, or you engage my coaches as uh, as your primary coach, or you engage both of us, right? Uh, some of you work with my coaches on the technical side, and you work with me on the strategic side. All cool stuff. Some of you are also members of Practice Power, uh, which you can get all the goodies there, uh, the best return on investment on the in the industry today. But... With all that being said, I'm always asking what's next. And, you know, I've, I've experimented with masterminds, uh, extremely valuable, probably one of those, from, from a pure uh, power standpoint, I think it's one of the best things I do. Uh, you, you, when you put a couple hundred years of experience, you know, in a room with the right people, good things tend to happen. So what I've decided to do is to take that concept, shrink it down a little bit, because you can't, you know, my current group has about 18 people in it. Uh, we meet twice a year live. Um, you can't do that online. So what I'm going to start doing is putting together or offering power teams. A power team is a hybrid of a online or virtual mastermind along with high-level strategies that I will deliver. Uh, we work together as a group, as a unit for an entire year, uh, once a month together. Uh, then, uh, the, then the members of each team We'll have a little time for each other uh, throughout the month, and there'll be a private project slash message board slash uh, repository, if you will, of all of our material that you can access 24-7, 365. Um, groups are no more than five, and uh, just be watching for the announcement on that sometime in the month of April. There'll be specific groups. There'll be... Uh, uh, advisors who are, are in uh, wirehouses, so there'll be a wirehouse group, uh, there'll be an independent group, and I even may come up with an I advisor group and a uh, meeting mastery group. So for sure there'll be two groups, maybe four. So even if you're involved with us in another way and you want to have something very specific, maybe work on your selling skills, your meeting skills, or you really want to master I advisor, uh, there'll be some opportunities for that. So be on the lookout for that. I've taken up enough of your time today. Have a great day. Hope you're having a great end of the first quarter. See you in about a week.